Hello, welcome to HKR 2515, Social Psychology of Leisure. My name is Dr. Angela Lex Atkinson. You may call me Angela, or a lot of people um, call me Dr. LA. That's my nickname. So why study this course? Well, whether you're in uh, your focus is, you know, just HKR, human kinetics in general, or if you're focused on physical education, uh, recreation, whether that's community or therapeutic, uh, or you're in kinesiology, you're working with people to help them um, lead healthier and happier lives. And this course is really about the study of the experience of activity, whether it's leisure, you know, sport, socialization, um, or exercise. So some of you will be involved in developing and providing services and opportunities that will enable others to make more out of their leisure time. Um, not everyone uses their leisure time in a healthy way. It's actually a big problem. While leisure is rewarding, it seems um, that it is a problem for many people. We have, uh, and even you can see this in our um you know, health indicators in our country. You know, we're not all meeting physical activity guidelines. We're not all participating in activities that make us feel better about ourselves. Um, you know, we have, there's mental health issues. All these can be related in some ways to how we use our leisure time. Many of you are going to be um, working with people and helping them develop meaningful and satisfying leisure. And uh, researchers and practitioners have to study then how to examine leisure behavior and experience and what influences these experiences. It's important to understand the social psychology of leisure in order to be able to meet the needs and better provide a quality service. You know, just because you create a, for example, a recreation center like the building does not necessarily, that's just a part of the experience. Um, and, and you can uh, make people come back more and more if you create a activity experience or leisure experience or recreation experience that, um, is meaningful and makes them feel good about themselves. So just a little bit about myself. Um, this is the, um, except for when we have synchronous learning, um, this is the uh, time that, the only time really that you're going to see my face. Uh, most of the lecture videos, uh, I don't record my, um, my face just to help reduce the, any lag time on the videos. So I grew up in Kitchener, uh, Waterloo, Ontario. And in fact, that's where I am currently. So um, I came on sabbatical and um, to Ontario from Memorial in, I guess it was the summer of 2019. Uh, and then COVID happened. So I was uh, working remotely all last year and I'm still remote. So I'm in Kitchener, I'm an hour and a half uh, behind you. Just keep that in mind. And, you know, so I don't have an office uh, in the phys ed building at all. So it's a little bittersweet here uh, because, um, you know, I really normally enjoy engaging with you, but I'm hoping that I can provide you with a good remote teaching ex uh, and learning experience. So this is my family in Kitchener. Um, and you'll see I had a little sister. My little sister Cora was born when I was uh, 13, like in grade, yeah, grade eight. And here you'll see me in my uh, <laughs> permed mullet um, with the uh, banana clip is what that's sporting. Although I've seen the banana clip is kind of coming back though. All the 80s stuff is back. I was a typical recreation major in my teens, involved in lots of different things, uh, playing music, uh, volunteer work, um, specifically with uh, chronic pain, fibromyalgia. I, I was diagnosed with uh, fibromyalgia when I was 14. I did synchronized swimming, and I was a synchronized swimming coach, um, and eventually in university uh, helped to develop a one of two um teams in Ontario that were competitive um, synchronized swimming teams for uh, teens with uh, disabilities. I was also really involved in tennis 
And I was very much a part of like the environmental movement, anything to do with the environment and uh, big into like student services. So when I went to try to find what I might like to do, um, I realized, you know, someone guided me and uh, said that they thought I would enjoy recreation and specifically therapeutic recreation. So I went to the University of Waterloo um, where I did my bachelor's degree in therapeutic recreation uh, and then uh, a master's degree in social psychology of leisure. Uh, there you'll see uh, Roger Mannell and me. He's uh, retired now a couple of years ago, um, but he was my mentor and he's also one of the authors of your textbook. So uh, I learned from, you know, who, someone who's viewed as uh, one of the fathers sort of of social psychology of leisure. And there I am getting my... Uh, I think that's my, uh, yeah, that's my bachelor's degree picture. And that's actually uh, David Johnson. He was one of the last uh, governor generals. He was the president of Waterloo and then became the governor general after. Got married pretty uh, soon after university um, to a statistician guy. And uh, he's the youngest of nine kids. And so... Uh, he, he has, uh, I have a lot of nieces and nephews uh, in this family. It's like buy one, get 70 free. My children are actually um, numbers 27 and 28th grandchild. And I have um, many uh, great, I don't know, at least, at least 15 great nieces and nephews now. So we're a big group. Uh, we moved to Georgia then after uh, I was finished at Waterloo and did my PhD at the University of Georgia there and um, in leisure studies and health psychology. And then also did a postdoc in gerontology at um, the University of Georgia. And so in Georgia, I worked with uh, Doug Kleber. He uh, is also one of the authors of your textbook um, and, um, you know, him and uh, uh, Roger and I have worked very closely together, so it was a privilege uh, for me to learn from these guys. In 2006, I uh, moved to St. John's to work at, in the School of Human Kinetics and Recreation. So here I'm an associate professor. My research looks at lifestyle and psychosocial factors that impact health and well-being across the lifespan. So I'm a lifespan researcher where I'm looking at, um, you know, things over time. So we'll learn a little bit about that this term. Uh, mostly I look at people who are at risk for um, illness or disability, specifically uh, people with chronic pain. And I'm also um, very focused on older adults. I teach a lot of the core uh, and general more like recreation courses, some of which, of course, are required um, in our new um, HKR degree. So I obviously teach this course, social psych. Um, oh, I have here, I have 2505, but I actually don't teach that that uh, very much anymore. That's uh, recreation programming. Community development, 3575, 3785. Some of you may be in that class as well. Um, and in the winter, I teach um, the organization administration courses. HCARE 2100, which uh, is just Oregon Admin. That's um, many of you. Um, Maybe it's actually a required course for the uh, HKR degree. And 3100 is advanced Oregon admin, and that's required by anyone in the uh, recreation stream. And uh, although I'm not, I'm not now, I used to teach a lot of research methods and stats courses. Uh, another course I'm teaching currently is uh, leisure education in the winter. So in St. John's, I... Uh, was um, I did a lot of volunteer work specifically with the Arthritis Society and also was very involved in a lot of community projects. Uh, I helped to um, develop a not-for-profit, the Community Garden Alliance, and was involved with the initial phases of things like the farmer's market and that sort of thing. And here's my family, um, my husband Matt and my kids Jackson and Luke. And on the bottom there is uh, my parents and sister, that that little baby before, that's her now in her early 30s. Um, we canned uh, four bushels of tomatoes last week and still love each other. So the purpose of HKR uh, 
2515 is to in introduce you to personality like and psychological and social factors that shape how people experience leisure. And we're really then focusing on a lot of, you know, life uh, cycle theories about motivation uh, and and then um, and a lot of different social psych theories that are related to leisure. So uh, this week, you're going to look at more like understanding, you know, what like what is social psychology and a bit about the history of social psychology uh, will then be, um, you know, how social psychology is used uh, to study leisure and different approaches to studying it. We'll look at leisure experience, needs, motivation, um, age and gender as well. Um, well, then we'll be looking at a lot of um, lifespan things uh, over your life course, the social influences over the life course, uh, and the impacts and benefits of leisure over the lifespan. We're going to look at personality uh, and then optimizing leisure outcomes. And sorry, I shouldn't have uh, race, ethnicity, and culture here. I've removed that on, from um, the curriculum this term just because I need to update some information for that lecture. So getting in touch with me, obviously I am not in the um, office since I'm in Ontario, uh, so use email. Uh, please use the Brightspace email um, and you know you can go communication, go, you can go to like class list, find my name, the instructor, click on that, click that little uh, email icon. I do check very regularly and we'll get back to you in a timely manner. Um, you can also, uh, well, you can email me through mine, but I get so many emails uh, that way that yours can get lost. I prefer to keep everything organized in Brightspace. Um, but for anything non HKR uh, 2515 related, please, you know, feel free to email me or like in the future when the course is done, if you need a reference or whatever. So I won't have, um, you know, person to person office hours, obviously. Um, it's just if you uh, need, you know, I do have several times throughout the uh, term. Well, we will be meeting and you can ask me questions then. Um, but otherwise, if you don't want to just use email, uh, get in touch with me and I can either give you a phone call or we can meet um, online in online rooms or WebEx. On Brightspace, you'll find the syllabus and course schedule, and please go through them. Um, the syllabus, remember, is a contract between you and your instructor for that course, and I'm supposed to follow it, and you're supposed to follow it. So um, make sure that you understand the policies. Um, there, there's a course schedule. It will be fairly set, but it, you know things could happen, and it might... Um, I might need to make changes, but uh, I will show you that at the end of this PowerPoint, but it's got everything there, the topics, what you have to do, uh, when things are due, um, what readings you have, etc. When we do have synchronous classes, if there was any reason I did have to cancel it, I will obviously put an announcement on D12, but generally I also send um, emails uh, through my email. The textbook is um, Social Psychology of Leisure, third edition. Walker, Kleber, and Mannell. As I already mentioned, Kleber and Mannell were my profs. Walker uh, is just recently retired from the University of Alberta. Do you need the textbook? I say yes. Uh, it's required. Uh, I assume that you have read it. Um, and you're going to get a lot more out of the course uh, and growth as a person and professional if you do read it. And I highly recommend that um, any student who is in community recreation or therapeutic recreation pathways or degrees get the book because you're going to use it and cite from it, you know, use it as a reference for many of your papers and other courses. Social psychology of leisure is really the core foundation of, well, therapeutic rec really, but also um, uh, community recreation. Where do you get the book? Well, uh, the bookstore is not able to order the e-book um, um, from that publisher. So uh, I did not order the book at all via, through the bookstore. They might have some hard copies that are available there. I, I don't really know, like ones from previous uh, terms. Uh, 
But the uh, e version is available for $64 US from the publisher. If you go on Brightspace, you'll see you know the same information, and I have a link there to Sagmore Publishing. Um, and remember, um, you might even be able to share an ebook uh, with a friend as well. Um, you know, I assume you just can't both be logged in at the same time. You can purchase it used. Um, I've used this book for, I don't know, like since 2007. There's many editions out there, I'm sure. You can get it from a peer, I believe, through, um, I think it's like the H Care Society uh, Facebook. You can uh, message people about that um, or purchase it online. This is the third edition, but it's okay if you use get a used one from the first or second. The second would be preferred. Um, and I do have a table um, available in Brightspace that shows the difference between all the texts. Um, yeah, the first and second and third editions. The first two edition, the first, pardon me, the first two chapters of the textbook are posted on D2L. And also on the unit on age and gender, that's not available in the third edition. It was removed, but I still really like this topic. Um, and so I, uh, that chapter will be posted and scanned. Scanned and posted. Evaluation. Um, we have reflection activities. There are 10 of them total. They're worth 5% and they're due throughout the term. I'm going to go through each of these uh, individually in a moment. There's quizzes, seven of them throughout the term, worth 45% in total, also due throughout the term. And then a term paper worth 25%, due at the end, the last week of class. Though I should note, um, you know, I can be flexible with that uh, and have people, you know, submit it uh, even at the first day of, uh, you know, exams or that sort of thing. So the reflection activities are basically like little lab exercises, written lab exercises that you do in order to understand the course content and materials. They follow the different units that we have. Um, so uh, as an example, uh, next week we're talking about leisure problems and thinking about that and what is leisure? So you're going to need to, you have to find an article, a newspaper or a magazine or even journal article that dis, that presents something that's like a leisure problem. And uh, you're going to then reflect on that, writing 250 words, talking about, you know, how is this, like, what is the problem? How is it leisure? Using the definitions that we've used uh, and then thinking about how this problem can be solved. All of these, um, all the instructions for this is on Brightspace and, you know, they're equally weighed. They're all worth 5% and graded individually. The grading for this is then looking first to see, um, have you followed the instructions? And there's, there, it's very clearly outlined. There's a rubric for each of the reflection activities. And then the other points are about reflection. So have you been thoughtful and have you integrated the, uh, knowledge, the course knowledge, because I want to be able to see that you have, you know, thought about this, you know, after you've seen the lecture and, you know, um, and, and done your readings. There's uh, quizzes then, seven of them. They're not equally weighed. They're based on, you know, how many points. Um, for example, the first quiz, I can't remember exactly, but it might be like nine or ten points. Some of them are uh, 20. They're all completed on Brightspace. They're released, um, I don't know, a couple, you know, at least around a week and a half, at least before it's due. Um, and they're all on two units. So, for example, uh, the first quiz is on our unit today, like understanding leisure um, with social psych and, you know, uh, getting, uh, getting to know social psychology of leisure. Essentially, the first two units, the first two chapters of the um, course, and which is fairly small. So it's a, the smallest quiz. And I'm assuming, you know, I'm not using any recording material to see what you're, what you're doing. So I'm just going to assume it's open book because you're doing it online. However, you need to be prepared. The quizzes are not long enough for you to be learning the material while you do the quiz. Last year, a lot, most people did very well. Um, 
on quizzes, but you could tell people who struggled, it was probably that they hadn't done any of the lecture material. Um, and so you need to, you can't just, uh, you need to have done all your work before you do the quiz. So to prepare for the quizzes, do the lecture video. There's a handout um, that follows you know, each of the videos with fill in the blank. There's more information about that in an announcement on Brightspace. And then you read the chapter and, you know, make some notes. Um, that way you're, you know, ready to take the quiz. It's most of them are multiple choice, some matching and usually a short answer. Please note that the short answers, um, it's just the way gr the grading is. Um, through Brightspace in order for it to be automatically graded, it also automatically grades the short answers. However, it can't, uh, it's not smart enough to know the exact words that you're going to say. So you will get zero on short answers. That's the feedback you'll get when, as soon as you see your grade at the end of completing the quiz. So don't freak out. Um, what happens is then afterwards the TA, when everyone's written the quiz, so then TA will go and uh, manually grade the short answer questions. And then I will send a note out uh, actually showing the grade, you know, releasing the grade in the grade book. Uh, and that's when then you'll know that it's uh, finished. Um, uh, the quizzes to vary by length also. They're not all the same. It's based on how many points. I'm giving you one minute for multiple choice and, you know, uh, matching kind of questions. And you get uh, 1.5 minutes for short answers. And these are just very small uh, short answers. They're generally, you know, worth around three points or that, uh, that sort of thing. And finally is a term paper. In this course, uh, one of my goals is to prepare students who are new uh, in uh, to our degree in HKR and to make sure that you're prepared to write term papers, especially those who are in, um, you know, phys ed and recreation, who, uh, and especially in recreation, we have a lot more term papers that we write. So you're going to be writing a paper, it's 1,250 words. Um, it's going to be a, a written in first person and you're reflecting on your past and present leisure, work, family, about your activities. And then you're using um, the content that we've learned in this course and referencing and explaining and providing reasoning for why you think certain things and, and what type of experiences you had. There are um, online, there's uh, very extensive instructions. You do have to have uh, references and citations, and I do look closely at writing and spelling. Uh, and there's exam student examples also of excellent papers. Uh, I'm going to be, we'll be meeting one time in the term to actually go over the instructions. And then I also have a couple of help sessions if you need any, any guidance on the term paper. I have fairly high expectations for the term paper, but, you know, I'm uh, guiding you along to make sure and, uh, that you do well and also to teach you how to develop a good term paper. So uh, we're using obviously Brightspace uh, for this course, but I, I use it a lot even when I'm on campus. Um, this is where all communication is and all the materials that you need. Syllabus, handouts, all the readings, course schedule. I communicate through email, through Brightspace, and through the announcements. All the assignments uh, and instructions are posted there and you submit everything through the drop boxes, the assignment drop boxes. All grades are posted there. You, there's the uh, grading rubric. Um, I explained to you already about quizzes and how they're graded. You know, you're going to write the quiz. Don't freak out that you might have got zeros. You got zeros on the short answers. Uh, then we grade them. And then I release the grade in the grading um, section. And that'll, that's your final grade. So you're going to find on Brightspace, have a look around, uh, links to the videos are there. And by the way, I only have the first uh, two weeks right now um, posted, but you'll find that I post, uh, I'll be posting quite a few of the weeks in advance. So this is a course that you might be able to do some work ahead if, if you want to. Um, however, there's preset dates for the quizzes when I release them. 
Um, you'll find all the class handouts. Again, it's fill in the blank. I talk in an, about an, what they're for in an announcement, but um, I do not provide PowerPoints only to those um, who are, you know, who require them for because of a learning difference. And uh, the point is, is you should be look, using those handouts as a guide. And obviously it emphasizes too kind of what's important to understand for the quiz. You'll find uh, all the instructions for the reflection activities, um, everything to do with uh, writing your term paper, examples. Uh, here I have incorrectly exam review. I'm at quiz review. For each of the units, there's uh, what uh, a quiz review document that explains what you kind of need to know for that quiz. And obviously grades are released there. And I, I don't think I verbally mentioned this. Make sure you check your grades because sometimes there can be errors, you know, and um, so it's a good idea to keep on top of that and, you know, get in touch with me if you don't understand something or you think that a mistake has been made. Do you expect me to uh, get to know, know you as much as I can? Um, I try to be uh, enthusiastic and also learn to be a better instructor. I'm learning more about how to do remote teaching right now. Um, but, you know, I, I and I really do listen to you guys for feedback on how to improve the course. I do give a lot of help via examples and instructions and rubrics you'll find. I am pretty flexible about due dates if you if it's apps, you know, if required. I don't expect don't be handing asking for extensions all the time. But for example, if you've got two two midterms and you've got the reflection activity and quiz due, like, you know, I don't mind if you, um, you know, you can email me and ask if you can submit those things a couple days later. Don't make a habit of it, but, you know, I, I'm understanding. And usually we get uh, grades back uh, within one week. I expect for you that you really look at the syllabus carefully and course schedule. Uh, you keep on top of things. You know, it's up to you. Uh, I can only send so many reminders and that sort of thing. I understand that sometimes remote learning, it's difficult to be motivated to keep on top. Um, you know, I will do my best to motivate you. But in the end, you know, it's up to you to be uh, making sure that you're on time and, and have everything um, done. Um, submitted when it's due. Uh, hand things in on time. It's 10% late uh, for each day late, but obviously, you know, you can speak to me about that. If you do um, need a request for an extension, make sure you get in touch with me 48 hours beforehand. Uh, do this in email. Now, if you have any problems, please come and see me before it's a big one. Um, or if you anticipate you might have a problem, you know, let me know ahead of time about anything or, you know, you're, uh, you're, I don't know, that you're um, not, haven't been feeling well or someone in your family is experiencing some problems and anything that might affect, you know, how you're learning in the course. And, of course, people who are registered with the Blunden Center, uh, I receive emails about that. But if you have any problems uh, or any learning difference that's not registered or a health issue, you know, come and contact me. Uh, I am accommodating to those beyond people who are just in, in the Blunden Center. For example, I remember last year I had a couple of students, because of COVID, too, they, they weren't registered in the Blunden Center. And it was their very first term ever. Um, so for the first couple of times, like the quizzes, they didn't maybe have the extended um, time that was required. Um, I'm someone who will uh, is understanding about that. You know, um, I understand that it sometimes takes, especially if you're in first year, it takes time to for you to get in the system. So please just get in touch with me. So I'm just now going to uh, show you the course schedule just to orientate you to that. So this is the course schedule. You can see I've listed the dates. CRI means if it's um, independent or if we have class. And as I said, we only meet a few times. We meet via online rooms uh, and I have links then into that system. 
So, for example, today or, you know, the first week, uh, intro to the course, you're supposed to be watching this video. Look over the syllabus and the schedule and orientate yourself uh, to Brightspace. I've got, you know, the first week one and week two of material. Then you're going to right away start working on understanding leisure with social psychology unit, um, like the history. So look at, um, you know, the chapter one reading has been posted, as I said, and watch the lecture video. Next week, week two, um, is social psychology of leisure, you know, getting to know it. So you're going to, again, watch the lecture video and secondly, read the chapter, which is also I have posted. After that, uh, you can do the quiz. The quiz then is due on Sunday the 19th. I've made all the due dates due on Sundays. Oh, except for the term paper. So uh, almost, you know, every Sunday you either have a quiz and or a reflection activity due. Um, and you'll see when you look at this, uh, all it's all laid out, then what you need to do each week. Oh, and then next Thursday, um, we'll have class. We'll meet and greet each other. I'll answer any questions you have about the course. And we'll also have a discussion on leisure problems. Uh, and I'd like you to, you know, bring a leisure problem um, to class, like as I mentioned about these articles uh, or a magazine article. You'll understand what I mean by that if you when you watch um, the uh, first lecture videos. So that's uh, it for today. I'm really looking forward to having you uh, in this class. Um, and this is a topic that is really close to my heart and I really like teaching this course. Uh, now next, please, you know, make sure you look at the syllabus, look at the course schedule um, and, you know, email me if you have any immediate questions, but otherwise save them up and we will be able to, uh, I wanna do a, a Q and A with the class on uh, next Thursday. Um, you can, as I said, start uh, watching and you're working on your uh, the units, the first two units. So the lecture videos are there, the class handouts and the readings. Uh, and then, you know, you can get ready to start writing quiz one and also have a look at the very first reflection activity. Take care and I'll see you uh, next week.